Hi, so please introduce yourself. I am uh, Eric Viret, uh, working with uh, your group, uh, market intelligence and consulting company uh, based in France. And uh, you just had a presentation right here, so what you would, what you would talk about? Well, we were talking about a little bit of the status of the micro LED uh, technology industries and uh, especially what are the potential of micro LEDs compared to OLED. Can we ever expect to see micro LEDs succeed and uh, compete with OLED in some applications? Uh, you mentioned uh, that uh, Apple had an investment in a company and they kind of canceled that project or what happened? Correct. So uh, Apple, I would say, I wouldn't say created the micro LED industry, but they definitely put it in a map when they acquired a micro LED display startup in 2014 called the LuxView. And since then, they spent internally, we estimate about uh, $3 billion over 10 years to develop the technology. And uh, they were getting pretty close. They were starting to ramp up manufacturing. One of their partner had spent close to 1.4 billion building a fab specifically for this project. But in uh, February, uh, Apple decided to cancel that project. And how did you know they canceled it? Did they announce anything or did just the industry knows you figured out? No, yeah, they, they, they didn't announce anything, but uh, we have here that all level of the supply chain. And uh, so all of a sudden the, the phone started ringing left and right and we knew within 24 hours. Uh, so what was this company in 2014? What were they doing 10 years ago? So they were developing, their, their, they were already focusing on developing micro LED uh, displays. Uh, so using micro LEDs and uh, their probably core technology was a, a transfer technology that allows you to efficiently transfer the, the micro LEDs from the wafer to make a display. Uh, imagine, to, to, to give an example, if you're trying to make an 8K TV, you need to transfer 100 million of those micro LEDs. Uh, that are typically the size of a bacteria or <laughs> a blood cell. And uh, you need to do that within a few minutes to be cost efficient. If you do it one by one, it's going to take a few years, right? So if you do it with the, the, the best pick and place, so one by one machine uh, in the semiconductor industry today, it would probably take about 11 years to make a TV. <laughs> so That's a little bit the too long. big breakthrough that was needed for micro LED was that what they call mass transfer technology, and that's what LuxView, that company, was working on. And uh, I'm just guessing, how does it work? Like, is this some kind of way that all the LEDs are turned in the right place, and they're, they're like some kind of thing swoops in, and it just how does it work? Yes. So the, the the LEDs are made just like any you know silicon processors, memories. They're, they're made on a on a small wafer at a very high density. And to make a display, you need to transfer those individual micro LEDs, singulate them, and transfer them to a larger, what is called a backplane. So depending on the size, a smartwatch, a phone, or a TV. So you need to go from that like high, very high density of components to a much lower density of components on the display. And, uh you know, I'm just guessing and I, I look at Apple stuff and stuff like that, but I'm mm -hmm. also thinking a company like Apple that has so much, let's say it's called money and stuff, right? Yes. They, yeah. they have to invest in so many different things to be the guys that do it first, kind of, right? Sometimes, right? Correct. But yeah. Uh, yeah. when they invest in all these things, doesn't mean they, they want to actually use it. Maybe they invest just to make sure other people are not going to do it without them yes. or something mm -hmm. like that, right? Yeah. So it doesn't mean it's a bad idea. Maybe it's, maybe it's just they don't think it's so profitable or... That's correct. I mean, uh, as to remain, uh, stay in uh, one of the leading companies, they have to continuously uh, invest and uh, innovate. And uh, of course, not all project is going to come to fruition. I don't know what's the, <laughs> the death rate, how many projects actually make it into a product, but uh, which leads to one of my peeves when I see Apple finds a lot of patents on a lot of technologies and all of a sudden sometimes people in the media pick up on one patent and say, oh, Apple's working on that, this is going to be in the next iPhone. No, there's probably like 99% attrition <laughs> of technologies that never make it. Like when they have the EV car and all these other yeah, things. Yeah. So it was just a bunch of patents, but yeah. it doesn't mean they actually yeah. will launch I mean, anything. They, they had a big team and the, the EV project installation actually came at, at the same time as the, the LED project. So there's somebody probably decided to like weed out a little bit <laughs> the, the number of projects. Uh, maybe in the industry, there is a little pressure in terms of uh, uh, the, the sales numbers of these MacBooks and these 
mm. iPhones and stuff is not going as high as some could hope when yes. they have a, yep. a market mm. cap of three mm. trillion. Yes. So mm. maybe they need to cut a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I mean, they, they need every once in a while, you need to rationalize, improve efficiency and try to focus on uh, innovations and products that you strongly believe can make it into a product. And micro LED was getting close to there, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, OLED, which is the incumbent technology, is a moving target. It was also, it's improving on a continuous basis, both in terms of cost and performance. So as uh, OLED keeps improving and micro LEDs kept getting delayed because it's difficult, the, the value proposition was shrinking. So uh, it was for a smartwatch project? So it was a little one point something inch screen, is that the Correct. idea? Correct, yeah, the, the, the initial project was the smartwatch. We believe that uh, at least initially when Apple invested in this technology, the smartwatch was to be kind of the beach head toward the smartphone in the longer term. So what would have been special about using micro LED on a smartwatch? Would it have been brighter, uh, less power consumption? So potentially some of the strong potential benefits again of uh, micro LED would be uh, much higher brightness, so full readability in the sun, uh, hopefully with lower cons power consumption than uh, OLEDs. Uh, the viewing angle are also uh, very exceptional, which for a mobile device, especially for a smartwatch, where if you're running, you glance at it, you don't have time to be perfectly aligned. And uh, it's, uh, it's actually one of the pretty impressive and spectacular benefits of micro LED. Did you see some uh, prototypes of what these smartwatch displays could look like? So I, did, I didn't see the one made by uh, Apple, but uh, I saw a lot. Some of them were showed publicly on the exhibit today, and uh, I've seen some that were showed in more quiet and closed environment. And I would say that I'm seeing some progress, and some of the few ones I saw recently were quite encouraging. I don't know if it makes sense to do light fields with micro LED or does it make sense to add a bunch of sensors in the display? Like there was session mm -hmm. after you, right? They're talking about fingerprint sensor, yes. yeah. maybe some camera sensor or some other kind of things could be, mm -hmm. because their micro LED only takes a small part of the display. Exactly. And there's 90% yeah. mm -hmm. space for other stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yes, micro LED can be very, very tiny, so you, you can shrink them to very small size, which frees up a lot of space on the, on the display itself. And you could use that space to put all kinds of components, sensors, and uh, people are already working, and there's, there are many patents about that, but people are already working on integrating. You can think like full display, uh, fingerprint sensing for increased security, so multi-fingers, uh, lensless camera, you know, one of the problems with uh, conferencing when your camera is on the top of the display, it looks like you're never looking at the person you're talking to. So you could have like a full display lensless camera, you could have all kind of uh, bio sensors, heart rate monitor of course, blood glucose, vein imaging, uh, gesture recognition, 3D sensing. Um, so a lot of you just mentioned some kind of like healthcare monitoring kind of things, yes. and that's mm -hmm. a, one of the applications people like to have on their smartwatch. So it would make yes, sense to yeah. do a bunch of extra things to do with that kind of sensing, right? Yeah, we, on we, the screen. we believe that that was also one of the reasons Apple was interested in this technology, because what they were buying when they purchased that company was not, not just a display technology, not just another display technology, but uh, kind of a, a full system potentially that could enable uh, many more functions. So uh, is micro LED going to take over the market or not? What would you say? It's, uh, it's still a long shot. Uh, this uh, Apple project was kind of the whole industry incubator for micro LED. So with this incubator gone, uh, we're kind of back to square one of that chicken and egg situation where to, uh, we would need high volume production of micro LEDs to enable economies of scales and a price point that could justify mass production. So to escape that uh, conundrum, we need a, a champion, somebody willing to bet big to make this happen. And right now we are kind of looking at who are the potential candidates. So walking around this awesome trade show, mm -hmm. uh, it looks like micro LED for, for AR could be great, right? Absolutely. That's going to maybe, yeah. that's, that could be yeah. huge potentially, yeah. right? Uh, um, AR is a completely different beast from the smartwatch, the smartphone, everything else. And I think it's on its own independent path 
uh, with a fairly high probability of success for micro LED. Uh, why does it have a, a, a is it is to do with the brightness that they, they some, some of them talking about million nits, they can get really bright and you need that for the AR? Yeah, I think the, the, the AR is very challenging because you need very high brightness in a very small form factors. So I think micro LED is, is if not the best, one of the best position technology to deliver that tuning combination of uh, brightness, form factor, power consumption, and cost uh, that the AR industry needs. And uh, another uh, area that just looks so awesome, I was lucky to see Ventana's tiled micro LED display, a 220 yes. inch 6K display, and it would be a dream to have something like that affordable. Is there any chance mm -hmm. this kind of technology could come down in price for big TVs, huge, bigger than 100 inch. It, it could, and that's what some companies are betting uh, on, and they're trying to uh, scale the technology, but again, to get to the cost uh, that you need for a consumer product, uh, economies of scales are going to be critical, and the challenge for the micro LED right now is uh, how do you bootstrap this industry to reach those economies of scale. Because OLED looks great, Yes. LCD is always doing amazing yes. stuff, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, so sometimes it's hard for some, somebody else to, some, some other technology to come in and yeah. just mm -hmm. become a huge success, right? Because these other guys also coming down in price all the time, right? Yeah, correct. I mean, uh, OLED and even LCD is still have pulling more tricks out of their sleeves and improving uh, on a regular basis. And there is like more than $200 billion of uh, existing manufacturing infrastructures. So it's always very difficult to displace any incumbent. For micro LEDs, I think, uh, should first try to focus on doing things that no other technologies can do uh, and succeed in those various niche applications. Uh, when they combine stuff with the quantum, quantum dots, mm. uh, or um, it, it, do you think it's going to happen in the laptops and smartphones? So the, the, there is some efforts as well for uh, the laptop. Uh, here I think the, the main driver would be the power consumption because uh, with uh, more and more edge AI, so integrating the AI directly on the device versus our opposition to doing it in the cloud, the power consumption of the processors is going to go higher and higher and higher. So the displays has to use less and less power to compensate. So the potential for low power consumption of micro LED is a, is a strong drive for, I would say, laptops, maybe tablets. Smartphone is a compelling one, but it's probably the most difficult application for micro LEDs, simply because OLED is already doing an excellent job and uh, the cost is going to be a challenge for micro LED. All right, and uh, you, you, did you have a lot of discussions here at the show? Oh yes, that was an amazing show. That's a very busy and intense week. Uh, the entire industry is here. It's the opportunity to see everybody at every single level of the supply chain and to have a, a lot of stimulating discussion while seeing all the gizmos on the, on the floor show. And there's hundreds of people at the sessions and it looks like the industry wants to talk about what they're doing, right? They don't want to keep it secret too much because yeah. they need to collaborate mm -hmm. to get things done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that, that could be a, a general statement that applies to the entire display industry, so there, there's always that uh, trade-off between the, the need for secrecy when you're developing new technologies, but it's very difficult to develop new technologies on your own, isolated in your yeah. corner of the room. Yeah, you need to make friends and you need to find people, you need to build ecosystems, so the information has to circulate, and this is why a, a trade show like this is great. And, and your company, what do you do? You do a different, many different topics? Yes, yeah, so your, your group is a, a consulting market research company. Uh, so we do uh, strategic uh, market technology analysis as well as uh, m and due diligence services, teardown, reverse costing. Uh, but they cover, the, the display is just one activity of the company. Uh, the company cover more mainstream semiconductors, for example, like memories, processors, etc. Uh, compound semiconductors, power semiconductors, and uh, all kind of uh, all kind of applications. So I'm just a YouTuber, right? But I'm, I can imagine that some some people, maybe in some s like anywhere, that might be interested in to invest their money in new things. Mm. It might might be a new entrant that doesn't even have background in displays, but sees maybe micro LED as a way to get in 
and get some market share with something new just by putting yes. money into it. Yeah. Does that make sense, what I'm uh, saying? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the micro LED is uh, another reason uh, many were excited about this is that it's a completely different supply chain compared to existing displays. The display supply chain currently is very, um, very vertically integrated. So a new display fab nowadays for LED, you have to put like three to seven billion dollars on the table. With micro LED, you could imagine a, a newcomer just managing the supply chain, making the design and having an LED maker making the chip, a, a driver IC maker, like a foundry TSMC type, uh, making the drivers, assembling all that. So the, I would say the, the barrier of entrance in terms of capital is much lower. And because the whole world is being compelled to switch to LED lights mm -hmm. and they're all the light bulbs, does that help also with the LED, mi micro LED, mini LED business? Yeah, that's, what, that's what's clearly kind of the starting point. I don't think micro LED displays would even exist if uh, we hadn't been successfully already switching uh, general lighting, automotive lighting from incandescent fluorescence to LED lighting. The materials and some stuff is related with the stuff that goes into the micro LED? It's, it's really, it's, it's the same technology, it's the same material, it's the same manufacturing process. Uh, so you can leverage all that existing knowledge. You just need to bring in a step further because those micro LEDs, as the name says, are very, very small, which creates a lot of new problems. But the, the, the baseline is strong and it exists because of the general lighting application. And companies like AMS, Osram, or these kind of companies that I see on the logos when you buy the, the, the LED bulbs yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. for, uh, for projectors or for, uh, mm -hmm. for they, I guess they must be thinking how to invest in all this stuff and be part of the business when, if that becomes huge, right? I mean, yes. they would be yeah. the guys doing mm -hmm. it, right? No, I think uh, AMS or RAM has been one of the early believers, I think, in micro LEDs. They have developed technologies on their own. And as you might know, they were, they were the partners for Apple in this uh, smartwatch micro LED venture. So they, they built a fab for Apple, which unfortunately now is kind of useless or at least temporary, uh, doesn't have any, any purpose. So uh, it's been announced that Osram is trying to sell that fab. Uh, Maybe they okay. could just partner with somebody else. Make another project. I, w I wish, and I'm sure they wish they could find somebody like right away, but uh, I don't think anybody is really ready to step in and uh, take the role that Apple had endorsed in this industry for now.